Hello fellow plot questioners, today we got Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics and today we will give a brief summary and well, let's get right into it. Please turn. Alright. So, this book is about the pursuit of happiness, which is, you know, quite good. And this, and it's about the pursuit of, well, good. It's technically, of course, about the pursuit of good. But Aristotle believes that the supreme good is happiness. Everybody agrees about that. However, everyone disagrees about what happiness truly is. For example, a lot of people think pleasure is happiness. But then sensual pleasure is only a part of happiness, we believe. And also, some people think honor is happiness. But honor is more like a reward rather than an action by itself. Therefore, that doesn't make any sense either. Happiness needs to be an end sufficient by itself, unlike virtue and unlike, you know, intelligence, for example. It, it needs to be happiness is good by itself, right? Because if you have just intellect, but if you don't use the intellect for good things, then it's not good. And if, you, if you're virtuous, but you don't really act on anything, then that's not going to be good either. So happiness is the supreme good. Now, about the pleasure thing, like, I think everyone, everyone can admit that they like pleasure and they dislike pain. Like, you know, I like, I like watching YouTube, I like gaming, I like reading, I like, I like writing, you know. It, it's all very pleasurable to me, but I don't like math, I don't like physics, I don't like, I don't like, um, sports, for example. Like, we think about, think about pleasure, right? Pleasure is, to us, it gives us happiness. But then... Well, you gotta admit, pleasure isn't really the highest amount of happiness, I think. Because, of course, pleasure in itself helps, because, you know, if you're, if you're pleasured, then it gives you happiness. But think about it like this. This is an example that Aristotle made. Uh, think about if there was a child, okay? And you had the power to become that child. And if you became the child and your mentality changed of a child, then you'd always be pleasured. You'd always be happy. But could you call that true happiness? You don't understand how the world works, and your intelligence isn't there, but you're just happy. And I don't think that's really the kind of happiness that people should be going for. You should go for a more higher happiness. And that's why Aristotle's conclusion for the supreme good is contemplation. Because it's a combination of all of the things that Aristotle stands for. First of all, contemplation is pleasurable. Second of all, contemplation is virtuous when we're contemplating about complicated things. It's also intellectual. So while, and we also push our minds to its maximum level, to our full potential when we're contemplating. Since the, the argument that Aristotle uses is that the only people, the only beings that can truly contemplate forever are the gods themselves. Therefore, we as humans should participate in those godlike activities often, and that's, that's why contemplating is the supreme good. Now, a couple of things that I want to mention. First of all, Aristotle puts a lot of emphasis on virtue. And he talks about how virtue leads to good, and being a virtuous person in general leads to good. However, I want to pose a question or a danger of trying to be a virtuous person. Let's say you're just a normally a virtuous person, okay? So you do virtuous things, and you're aware of yourself that you are virtuous, but you don't think about it that much, you just act that way. And I think that's what Aristotle means when vir being virtuous is good. However, let's think about a person who, is, who doesn't know how to be virtuous and then learns about virtue and starts to try to really every day remind himself and become virtue. I think there's a very real danger there that you can get consumed by trying to just trying to be virtuous. Because every, because every single time you try to do something good or if you try to help people, you just think, okay, I need to be virtuous, I need to be virtuous. I think that's a lot of pressure on someone and I think that can easily make a person kind of weird and go crazy a little bit. And I think there is a, a danger can be posed there that, you know, sometimes um, going for something like virtue, or just trying to be a virtuous person in general, the process of it might not be as, uh, as easy. And then the second thing is about contemplation. Now, I want to I wanna think about how perhaps there are levels to contemplation, right? Like when we're children, we contemplate about dominating the world and destroying it with nukes. And then as we get older, we get existential dread. And then I'm not sure what happens after you get older than that, but I'm sure, I'm sure what we contemplate about changes within our minds. And I think there is almost a quality to contemplation. For example, Aristotle says that a young person cannot be wise because wisdom comes from experience. If we base our thinking upon that kind of statement, then contemplation, the level of contemplation would go up as we get older. 
because we have more experience and therefore more wisdom. However, if we think about it that way, then isn't younger people a little more free to comp- contemplate? Don't we contemplate a lot more? I think that's I think that's like there's a line there where you can become way older and you can get all of the wisdom and experience and you can contemplate really really well. That doesn't mean that you contemplate often. However, when you're younger, you contemplate about everything: the world, new things, food, existential dread, like me. You can think about a lot of things, and I think there is a quality to contemplation. And if if there is a quality co- to contemplation, then then what the con- is the contemplation that Aristotle is talking about? Is that like the highest level where you need to be old and wise, and you need to you need to contemplate with virtue and pleasure and intellect? Or, or is he just talking about contemplation in general, which I think is a lot larger of an area rather than just, just what Aristotle says. I think that's something interesting that we can all think about. And I think perhaps, I don't, one thing that I think doesn't make sense is contemplation is just sitting and thinking, right? Because as humans, we need to do things and we need to do things to be good and virtuous. And that's another thing that Aristotle finds very, very important within his books. Then I don't. Then I find it weird that contemplation is the thing that we should be doing the most often. Shouldn't we be a more virtuous person or try to help people or do good within the world rather than just sitting and thinking? Or perhaps he's saying that being virtuous and being contemplative, a balance of the two, is what truly makes us, uh, truly achieves true happiness and true good. Who knows? And so I kind of had these three main questions about about virtue about contemplation and about the levels of contemplation and that's that's kind of the thoughts on it and i believe nicomachean ethics really is a book that you can really try to consider and kind of kind of, kind of try to put inside your life like am i living a contemplative life am i living a virtuous life like you can really think about that in some ways it's kind of like confucius's analects in that way I, and analects is very very different from this but it's it has that same talk about virtue and it has it has the same talk about how we should live our lives. And I think reading all of these different philosophy books and, and how we should live our lives and stuff, I think, I think it's very, very interesting. And I think how it, should we live a contemplative life or an action-filled life or whatever, I think that's a good, good, some good food for thought. And that's pretty much it for Nicol Making Ethics. I know I didn't go into full detail about all of the different nooks and crannies Aristotle explores within all of the, his books, but I, I give you guys like a brief summary of what he thinks and his conclusion. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Have a great day. And like always, your plot cluster and a plot cluster. Have a great day. Nicol Making Ethics is a good book. It's quite short actually, unlike, you know, the other one, also called ph- Physics. So if you want to read it, go ahead. It'll give you a lot of food for thought. Have a great day.